Reuters. We'll now take a, a couple questions each. And, uh, Reuters, and Je and Andrea, you guys the first question. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you, Chancellor Schultz. Um, Mr. President, I have wanted to ask you about this um, Nord Stream project that you've long opposed. You didn't mention it just now by name, nor did Chancellor Schultz. Did you receive assurances from Chancellor Schultz today that Germany will, in fact, pull the plug on this project uh, if Russia invades Ukraine? And did you discuss what the definition of invasion could be? And then Chancellor Scholz, uh, when I see Fragen darf, um, if I may ask you, uh, Chancellor Scholz, you said there was some strategic ambiguity that was needed in terms of sanctions. I just wanted to know whether the sanctions you are envisaging and the EU is working on and the US as well are already finished, finalized, or is there still work ongoing? And you're not really saying what the details are. Is that just an excuse for Germany maybe to not support the SWIFT measures? Let me answer the first question first. If Germany, if, uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. According to a New York Post article dated February 8, 2023, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Seymour Hersh has alleged that U.S. Navy divers laid bombs that destroyed the Nord Stream 2 natural gas pipeline under the Baltic Sea last September, drawing a denial from the Pentagon Wednesday. Hirsch, who scooped up journalism's top award more than five decades ago for exposing the My Lai massacre of Vietnamese civilians in 1968, cited an unnamed source in reporting on Substack that Americans planted remotely triggered explosives that wrecked three of the four pipelines built to carry natural gas from Russia to Europe. Hirsch went on to claim that the Navy conducted the operation under the cover of a NATO maritime exercise, All Tops 22. In a short statement, Pentagon spokesman, Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel Garen Gann told the Post that the United States was not involved in the Nord Stream explosion, reiterating the Department of Defense response to the same question back in October. Swedish officials suspected the blasts were the result of gross sabotage, and some Western officials were quick to blame the attacks on Moscow as it blocked gas supplies to Europe in response to sanctions over the last year's invasion of Ukraine. However, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zarkova said in response to Hersh's report that Moscow has repeatedly expressed its belief that the United States and NATO were involved in the explosions. Prior to the invasion, President Joe Biden had threatened that the Nord Stream 2 project connecting Russia and Germany would not move forward if an attack took place, causing some to suspect U.S. involvement with the pipelines exploded seven months earlier. According to Seymour Hersh's Substack article, the planning went on like this. In December of 2021, two months before the first Russian tanks rolled through Ukraine, Jake Sullivan convened a meeting of newly formed task force men and women from the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the CIA, and the State and Treasury Departments and asked for recommendations about how to respond to Putin's impending invasion. It would be the first of a series of top secret meetings in a secure room on a top floor of the old executive office building adjacent to the White House that was also the home of the President's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board. There was the usual back and forth chatter that eventually led to a crucial preliminary question. Would the recommendation forwarded by the group to the president be reversible, such as another layer of sanctions and currency restrictions, or irreversible, that is, kinetic actions, which could not be undone? What became clear to participants, according to the source with direct knowledge of the process, 
is that Sullivan intended for the group to come up with a plan for the destruction of the two Nord Stream pipelines and that he was delivering on the desires of the president. Over the next several meetings, the participants debated options for an attack. The U.S. Navy proposed using a newly commissioned submarine to assault the pipelines directly. The Air Force discussed dropping bombs with deflated fuses that could be set off remotely. The CIA argued that whatever was done it would have to be covert, and everyone involved understood the stakes. At the time, the CIA was directed by William Burns, a mild-mannered former ambassador to Russia, who had served as Deputy Secretary of State in the Obama administration. Burns quickly authorized an agency working group whose ad hoc members included, by chance, someone who was familiar with the capabilities of the Navy's deep sea divers in Panama City. Over the next few weeks, members of the CIA's working group began to craft a plan for a covert operation that would be used to develop divers to trigger an explosion along the pipeline. A hand-picked team of CIA and National Security Agency operatives were assembled somewhere in the Washington area under deep cover and worked out a plan using Navy divers, modified submarines, and a deep submarine rescue vehicle that succeeded after much trial and error in locating the Russian cable. The divers planned a sophisticated listening device on the cable that successfully intercepted the Russian traffic and recorded it on a tapping system. White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest in Hirsch's report claimed that it was riddled with inaccuracy and outright falsehoods. This would also come under file for Hirsch's public account regarding what happened to bin Laden in Pakistan in 2011, in which he said the government narrative certainly didn't fit. Former CIA Director, Deputy Director Michael Morrill later told CBS News at the time that he read Hirsch's report regarding the assassination of bin Laden and got a third of the way through the article and stopped because every sentence he was reading was wrong. The question is, Seymour Hirsch has a consistent history of using anonymous sources in the White House and Pentagon to formulate breaking stories. And he's been doing it for 50 years. Comes highly recommended. However, those in the State Department criticize Hirsch as being nothing more than a conspiracy theorist and consistently wrong. You be the judge.